Denali is the highest mountain in North America. Formerly Mount McKinley, it's one of the coldest in the world and its latitude makes the upper reaches feel thousands of feet higher than it is. I know because I've been here before. After spending many months preparing for a 2017 climb, our expedition got stranded for days by weather at 17,000 feet and had to retreat. This is the story of my return to finish the job in 2018. Starting all over was tough. I wore out the hills north of San Francisco on a bike and with a pack full of water jugs. And as a warm up I even climbed to the top of South America. But soon it was time to head back to Alaska. It wasn't the greatest start when my flight was cancelled, causing a 19 hour reroute, and I missed my train up to the park. But eventually I met up with the expedition team and reoriented, checked gear, and learned the ropes. We bonded over pizza and drinks. And of course, a visit to the Climber Graveyard. And met up with the Park Service. But still delayed by weather from flying out to base camp, we explored the small town of Taukitna at the gateway to the park. The expedition team was stacked, led by all star guides, including Vern Tejas. And the amateurs were impressive too, including an Everest summiter, an Iron Man, and a budding musician, among others. When the weather cleared, we loaded up a bush plane for the 30 minute flight into the Alaska Range. The heart is a blue, shoots up through the stony ground. We flew through these amazing mountains at eye level before landing right on the Cahiltna Glacier to set up base camp. Alright, here we are at base camp. Up there in the clouds is where we're eventually going. And that's the Cahilta Glacier. Climbing Denali expedition style takes two and a half weeks and includes a long gradual rise up from the glacier, followed by a series of steep climbs. It's 13,000 vertical feet from base camp to summit. Alright, we're moving. We're dragging sleds up the lower part of the mountain to help with the weight, which starts well over 100 pounds. The glacier is moving and it cracks as it moves opening up huge crevasses which are often hidden. Look at that guy. I don't want to fall into that. All right, we're here at our first camp. Still only about 7,000 feet. We, can, we have a bit of a clear view of uh, the Denali summit. We'll be coming up on the left flank. The winds and snow bury campsites quickly, so every new site needs to be built from scratch and hardened against the wind and crevasses.
For safety, we travel on rope teams of four, separated by 70 feet along the rope so it's less likely everyone falls into the abyss together. It makes the climbing kind of solitary. 7,800 feet. And the snow has started. The meal tent is where we connect. So my answer, my short answer would be because he still didn't have enough oxygen. <clears throat> Frostbite, same thing. We'd often gather in the meal tent where we tell stories, do some teaching, and cook and eat. Yeah, I need to come up with a better strategy. And check the weather. Oh yeah, and we had a guitar. We came to Alaska. We thought we were badass. And we met this guy who had climbed everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom, this one is a dead unpaid. And the trail has its own strip code. In the days to come, though my lips were dumb, in my heart how I cursed that load. <laughs> I got piss stains on my britches and I'm drunk out of my mind. <laughs> Wasted away here on Denali Hill. Searching for our lost cash of food. Some people say there's a raging storm to blame, but I know. Screwed. <laughs> the first moderate climb is a long slog up and around Ski Hill, starting at just under 8,000 feet. And we're off. Heading up Ski Hill. What people may not realize is that climbers actually climb almost all of Denali's altitude twice to help acclimatize and to split the load of carrying three weeks of food and gear. We'll climb each leg with half our stuff, bury that in a cache, then descend, and then climb back up with the rest the next day. It's a mental drag to be going in the wrong direction so much, but it works. It helps us acclimatize to the altitude. Ski Hill continues up to 11,000 feet. Finally, uh, turning toward the west buttress. Uh, you can see Motorcycle Hill up ahead, uh, but feeling great so far. got a pretty good picture of the next several days right in front of us right now, which is pretty great. Hello there, friends, family, and loved ones. This is Burn Baby Burn, reporting in from 11,200 feet above sea level. Everybody's having a horrible time. No, everybody's having a wonderful time. <laughs> Snowing like crazy, a little white out, freezing cold. <sighs> Welcome to Denali. All right, here we are at our 11,200 foot camp. Uh, my money, this is basically where the climbing starts. Now we're at the, uh, essentially the foot of the West Buttress. Got some glare from the sun there, but you might be able to see some folks going up Motorcycle Hill. We're gonna cut around to the right around Windy Corner up there and 
and then head up the right side of the buttress to the, uh, to the ridge. This will be fun. Shit. Okay. Motorcycle Hill is named for being the steepest slope a motorcycle could safely climb. Oh, unbelievable. Look at that. Hope I'm getting this. That is amazing. At the top of Motorcycle Hill. Top of the world! <laughs> Oops. Alright, scratch that. From the top of Motorcycle Hill, we go up to Squirrel Point across the polo field, and then up son of a bitch hill. Those are people over there, so you can kind of get a sense for how vast it is. We learned that sleds tend to flip over on side slopes. Repeatedly. Uh, all right, we're headed towards son of a bitch hill. Doesn't look too bad, but name so because you get halfway up it and you're like son of a bitch how long is this hell son of a bitch this hill keeps going and going all right i was just kidding last time it's son of a bitch all right we are about 13,000 feet just below windy corner all right i'm basically on windy corner now We traverse Windy Corner, where the winds whip around the edge of the west buttress. And then we reach advanced base camp at 14,200 feet. It's a sprawling layout and it's teeming with life. Expeditions from all over the world are here preparing to make their summit attempts. In a short hike from there, you find a spot known as Edge of the World. This is helmet cam as I walk out to the edge. Some misty snow on Windy Corner damaged my camera audio for most of the rest of the climb. There was an adjacent cliff nearby and the team volunteered me to test it. The reward for all this is a magnificent view of the Valley of Death and the Alaska Range. From here we'll head up the steep West Buttress Headwall and along the Buttress Ridge to 17 Camp. For what comes above, we need some practice handling ascenders on fixed lines with heavy gloves. The final exam. I want to pass this anchor. I'm going to pass this anchor by unclipping this. We are going up there tomorrow.
One of the biggest challenges on Denali is climbing up the headwall to the West Buttress Ridge. It starts here and is 800 feet of fixed line on a 55 plus degree slope. Sometimes it's icy, sometimes you have heavy traffic, often the descent can be even harder. And again, we climbed it twice. Once on top of the west buttress, we climb another thousand feet up along the ridge. It can include navigating around large boulders like Washburn's Thumb, where we have more fixed lines as we hang out over the cliff. On the back carry to pick up a cache, I popped a crampon off on a steep slope. Putting those on on flat ground is difficult enough. But putting them on while clinging to a rock on a ridge on a 60 degree slope was a real hoot. Here, Vern, one of the most famous mountaineers in the world, is up ahead alone on my rope. A thought that crossed my mind? If he slips, it'll be up to me to catch him or we'll make international headlines by morning. At high camp at 17,000 feet, I'd finally returned to where I'd gotten to last year. And the climb up to Denali Pass looks just as intimidating. We started our summit attempt pretty late in the morning. We wanted to wait until the sun came over the ridge. Unfortunately, we ran into some traffic. The Autobahn is a long, steep side slope that traverses and rises to Denali Pass at 18,000 feet. It was a difficult climb and I was quite winded at the top, but glad I'd never have to do it again. But we were way behind schedule, and when the winds looked like they were on their way to 30 miles an hour, we had to turn around. Just above Zebra Rocks at 18,800 feet, the forecast looked worse and we were out of time. Back down at camp, the mood was grim. The expedition was over. But then, at 5 a.m., Vern knocked on the tent. There was a surprise weather window to attempt the summit again. After training for so many months, the whole ball game for me came down to quickly getting back into the right mental state that morning. And then it was back up the Autobahn to Denali Pass. The weather looked good, but we still had another couple thousand feet up. The early start helped us avoid traffic, but it was much colder. I spent hours on the Autobahn side slope with my right hand and a glove on the head of my cold steel axe, and I nearly frostbit my fingers. Protecting that hand, we continued up Pig Hill to the summit ridge where we could finally see the summit. See you at the top, my friends.
The last steps of the summit are hard to describe. I won't try to do that or pretend to have found the secret of life up there, but I do think there's something universal about dedicating yourself to overcoming a challenge. And safe to say, standing on top of Denali, on top of North America, is pretty special. Tried to cut these